It's a hazy early evening here in the Valley of the Setting Sun. Phoenix, Arizona, where just northwest, you'll come into Surprise, Arizona, and the Surprise Recreation Campus, the home of the Texas Rangers and the Kansas City Royals. Those two teams meeting tonight in the Rangers' first night game of the spring. Welcome in, everyone. Along with Tom Grieve, I'm Steve Busby. Glad to have you along. And, yeah, it's finally under the lights for the Rangers. They'll get a taste of the early evening here in Arizona. And, you know, you Darvish was supposed to start tonight. But uh, if you heard Ron Washington's words a little bit earlier, he's not going to be able to make it. Precautionary more than anything else. But in his place tonight, a guy that we saw last Friday, Derek Lowe. Yeah, it was funny. Derek Lowe, before that start that he had on Friday, said, you know, nine days ago I was throwing batting practice to my nine-year-old's Little League team, but he held his own pretty well that day. Pitched two shutout innings. Now he comes back several days later. He's going to get another start. It's kind of uh, happening pretty quickly for him. He hasn't been in the position where he's had to make a team, but he's got a chance to make the team, and he's got to start tonight. Yeah, his second time out. It's going to be against the best offensive team in the Cactus League, Kansas City just tearing it apart in the early part of this spring training out here. Well, the Rangers and the Royals coming up next from Surprise, Arizona, right here on TXA 21, starting lineups in the first pitch from Arizona next. Ball on TXA 21 is sponsored by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your Texas Ford dealer and drive the best selling trucks for 35 straight years. Ford is the best in Texas. By TXU Energy for home and business. And by AT&T, UVerse TV. It's a beautiful evening. A few high clouds floating by. Very comfortable. Temperatures in the uh, low 80s. Very little breeze uh, blowing out to center. If there is one, let's take a look at the Kansas City lineup that will face Derek Lowe here tonight. Alex Gordon leads off. He's in left field. The shortstop, Alcides Escobar. Getting third, playing first, Eric Hosmer. Cleanup man is the DH, Billy Butler. Mike Bustakis is at third as Derek Lowe deals the first pitch of the night, and that's inside for ball one. Finish the uh, Royals lineup for you. Salvador Perez bats sixth. He's the catcher. Lorenzo Kane in center field as Gordon lines one to right field, a base hit. Now Alex Gordon, now 21 of 41 for the spring. Derek Lowe's career numbers, very good numbers too. There's a guy that's been a very good starting pitcher. He's been a closer and a very good closer. Career ERA of four. 20 games over 500, 
Had a nice big league career, trying to extend it by at least one year. Rangers have some openings in their bullpen, and he's a candidate right now. Take a look at the Ranger defense tonight. David Murphy in left, Craig Gentry in center, Julio Borbon is in right. Berkman to start at first. Kinsler and Andrews up the middle, Beltre at third. Giovanni Soto handling Derek Lowe behind the plate. A butt is popped up. Lowe makes the grab, and back to first is Alex Gordon. So Escobar trying to bunt his way aboard or at least get the runner over, fails to do so. And that is out number one for Eric Hosmer. Derek in his first inning on Friday against the Giants was helped in the first inning by a line drive to Craig Gentry that turned into a double play when Gentry gunned a runner down tagging up from second to go to third and Derek made the comment we'd still be out there if that double play didn't happen so <laughs> you know after a leadoff hit I'm sure he's very happy to see that bunt popped up to get the first out nice way to get the first out. And Hosmer, uh, despite the batting average, a pretty good double play candidate if you can get him to hit the ball sharply at somebody. It's a lot of hard ground balls. And he's behind in the count now. No balls and two strikes as Lowe works both sides of the plate. Hosmer just returning from the World Baseball Classic. He was on the USA team. Matter of fact, he took Mark Teixeira's place. When Tex went down with the uh, tendon injury. Speaking of Teixeira, that sounds like the latest it might be a little worse of an injury than they had initially thought. Sure, it's been a tough few months for the Yankees. Boy, no kidding. In the dirt, nice block by Soto. It's a ball and two strikes. That's a great experience for Hosmer, though. Hosmer, highly touted young player, one of the most highly touted players in all of baseball. His rookie season was a terrific rookie season. He hit 293. Last year, he slumped in his sophomore year down to 232. I'm sure getting the chance to play for the U.S. in those very meaningful World Baseball Classic games had to be a little bit of a boost to his confidence. Great feeling for him to get that chance. A ball and two strikes. There goes Gordon. The pitch is inside. The throw to second is in plenty of time. As Giovanni Soto guns down Alex Gordon at second base. Ball was off the plate inside and up a little bit. Boy, you talk about setting it up on a tee for Giovanni Soto. This was it. And I think the thing that Soto did so well to get that out at second base is get rid of the ball very quick. A little tapper will stay foul, and Osborne will come back and try it again at two and two. Nice, quick, accurate throw. And no contest at second base. We saw Giovanni last year uh, behind the plate really put on a clinic throw in the ball from time to time. He didn't, I think, a lack of uh, consistent playing time sometimes. Kind of got his mechanics messed up throwing. There's a swing and a miss, and low, a good breaking ball gets the strikeout. Well, leadoff single, but no damage done. The caught stealing took care of that. Royals gone in the first, half an inning in the books. Kansas City nothing. Texas coming up on TXA 21.
Hey, Ron Washington's club uh, puts up a zero against the Royals in the first inning. The Rangers come to bat here in the bottom of the first. Their lineup looks like this. Ian Kinsler leads off. Elvis Andrews, the shortstop, bat second. Lance Berkman in that number three slot. He's playing first base. Cleanup man is the third baseman, Adrian Beltre. In left field, batting fifth, David Murphy. Giovanni Soto coming off that caught stealing. Catching, hitting sixth. Mitch Moreland is the DH tonight. He bats seventh. Craig Gentry in center field, hits eighth. And Julio Borbone, the right fielder, is batting ninth. Irvin Santana, not with the Angels anymore. Pitching for Kansas City. Didn't have a very good year with the Angels last year. Trying to have a bounce back year with the Royals. Been throwing the ball very well this spring. Only walked one batter, struck out nine. Opponent's batting average below two. Royals are counting on him to be part of their rotation, part of a very good rotation. When you talk about good rotations, you don't generally think of Kansas City, especially the last four or five years, but they've remolded their team and their rotation. Could be a pretty good rotation this year. Santana, hopefully, will be a big part of that from the Royals' perspective. Next pitch to Ian. This is high and away. It's two balls, no strikes. Yeah, Santana was kind of the first shot across the bow for Kansas City in the offseason. 30 year old was uh, picked up by the Royals on the 31st of October. A Halloween surprise for the rest of the American League. And of course, Kansas City went out and made that big trade uh, with uh, Tampa Bay and got Shields and Wade Davis. And that really solidified the rotation. Ed Yost putting together a, a very, very good ball club in Kansas City. They have had the offense for the last couple of years. But their pitching had been really lacking, especially, Tom, like you said, in their starting rotation. Yeah, they just they, they didn't have a chance. It didn't matter how many runs they scored. They just weren't able to hold the other team down. But they, might, they might make some noise in the American League Central this year with that revamped rotation. All their young hitters are one more year advanced, a little more experienced, should be a little more confident. And if the season is anything like spring training, they're going to score a ton yeah. of runs. They're 17 and 4. And Ian Kinsler laces one to center field, a base hit. Well, Ian got the count full, and after fouling off a pitch, just rifled one right back through the middle. Santana's one of those guys, when he's got command of his fastball and his good slider, then he can shut you down in a hurry. But you face him so many times where his slider is flat and he throws the fastball out over the plate like this, and over the years, he's had some pretty good games against the Rangers, but he's had some games where the Rangers just yeah. lift him up, boy. Especially in Arlington. Yeah. Uh, he, when he was off there, it wasn't just a three or four run outing for him. No. He was giving up eight and nine. It wasn't pretty. Wow. A one on, nobody out. Here's Elvis. Pitch to the inside corner for strike one. Elvis, a nine game hitting streak coming into play here tonight. That average up to 345 for the spring. Opportunity for the Rangers to run a little bit. Kinsler looks like he's getting in the starting blocks. He's staying put. And the breaking ball finds the outside corner. It's 0-2. He had stepped off about a half step larger lead that time. And he was kind of measuring Santana, Gary Pettis, the Ranger third base coach, moving across the diamond this year. He and Dave Anderson exchanging places. 0 2 pitch. There goes Kinsler. The pitch hit on the right side. And boy, unfortunately for the Royals, Giovatella had had a little bit of a late break. He played that very well at second. He was able to go to the bag and still reverse himself to grab that ground ball. And Rangers almost had first and third going handily, but Giovatella, a good job at second. A great try by Elvis with a couple of strikes on him going the other way like that. Almost turned into a very nice hit and run. Well, you see that so often. An infield, middle infielder on a hit and run will break hard and early to the bag to cover. And a good hitter like Elvis or like Ian will take advantage of that with just a little ground ball that works its way through. So Kinsler now at second base. Here's Lance Berkman. By the mound, it's going to be a tough play. Alcides Escobar, bare hands, and sticks it in his pocket. You know, Berkman <laughs> with a tapper. Going down that line pretty well. He got out of the box in a hurry, and, and yeah, that's why they call me the big Puma. Well, I just smoked it down that line. Well, Lance is playing first base. First time he's been in the field. The other day he played and 
had a stolen base attempt. And this little chopper running all out to first base, looking good. That's nice to see. Had some leg problems the last last year, most of last year, but he appears to be very healthy right now, and that speaks well for the Rangers' opportunity to bat him third in the lineup and get great production. You know, one out now. Runners at the corners. Adrian Beltre is at the plate. Beltre a home run and three RBI and 222 the average this spring. One ball, no strikes. Adrian not appearing in a game for the first couple of weeks of camp. He wanted to make sure that the legs were uh, in shape, and he said he declined to go to the uh, World Baseball Classic because of where he was swing-wise and shape-wise. That ball's flying to left field in a hurry as Gordon. He can't get there. It drops for a hit. In to score is Ian Kinsler. And Adrian Belter gets the Rangers on the board. It's 1-0 Texas. Well, three hits in the inning. Belter is producing the first run. Yeah, pretty good fastball. Tailing in. Barely a strike. Probably going to probably jammed him a little bit. It's going to jam some hitters a lot more than that. Still got enough of the good part of the bat on it. There. The line drive in the left field. The runners are first and second now. Still just one out. Here's David Murphy. Montana pulling the string and Murphy out in front of it. 0 1 1. David having a good sprint. 326 that average. And the home run, his first of the spring, came yesterday over in Peoria against the uh, Seattle Mariners. 1 and 1. Murphy in his last 10 ball games is. Hit almost 400, 393. Berkman at second, Beltre at first. A little tap around towards second. Giovatella shovels to second. And Escobar gets the force play and steps off the bag. Well, that is out number two. Runners now at the corners. And Giovanni Soto will come up. Santana getting a lot of ground balls in this thing, and that's something that he normally doesn't do a lot of. He's much more a fly ball pitcher than he is a ground ball pitcher, but down here he's been able to uh, keep it off the good part of the bat for the most part to the Ranger hitters here in the first. Soto steps in, hitting 174. Giovanni and figuring to catch in the neighborhood of uh, 50 to 60 games this year. AJ Pierzynski getting uh, the majority of the time behind the plate. Soto has shown you that uh, with his work last year, he handles the Ranger pitching staff very well. And that's what you're looking for in a backup is a guy that can come in there and really get the pitching staff to get the most out of them. Santana's 1 1 pitch coming to Soto. Breaking ball. Nibbles at the inside corner, and it's one and two. Infield just slightly around to the left for Soto. As he takes that slide of this just off the corner. Perez all set to uh, take that into the club out, into the dugout, but now. They have none of it. Two balls, two strikes. Got him swing. Well, Santana able to get the side retired, but not before the Rangers come up with a run. On three hits, they strand two. We played one in surprise as the Rangers won. The Royals nothing on TXA 21.
If as Rangers Ballpark Suite Rentals are the perfect business solution for hosting clients or employees, and the suites can turn a game with family and friends into a special occasion. For your group of 10 to 200 to watch Rangers game in style, visit TexasRangers.com slash suites, or you can call 972-RANGERS. Now Derek Lowe back to the top of the hill. Billy Butler, the designated hitter at the plate. He takes a bit low, and it's two balls, no strikes. Now Butler, like many of the Royals this spring, just really tearing it up. 14 RBI. Well, hitting at 341. Pitches up and in, and it's 3-0 to Butler. Yeah, the Royals have the best batting average in spring training of any major league team by 21 points. <laughs> got a 335 team batting average. <laughs> a 3 0 pitch is hammered hard but foul down the left field line. I guess when you're 17 and 4, chances are your stats are going to look pretty good. But they've hit the ball. They've also pitched very well. They've yep. got the third best ERA, too. So it's been a nice spring for them so far. That's amazing. Their team ERA at 378 and down here. You have, you have that in Arizona. That is outstanding. Hard hit ground ball, but. Back to the shortstop, Elvis. Andrews across the diamond, and Butler is retired as Lowe comes back from the 3-0 count to get out number one. Yeah, I guess one of the things you would look for Derek when he's out there pitching is if he's getting ground balls because he's an extreme sinker ball pitcher, sinker ball, curve ball. But when his ball is sinking, obviously he's going to get a lot of ground balls. And so if he can get a lot of ground balls tonight, that would be a good sign that he feels good about the way his sinker's moving for him. Now here's Mike Moustakis. There's a good fastball to the outside corner for strike one. Moustakis, one of the young players that uh, Tom was talking about, came up with Kansas City. Moustakis and uh, Eric Hosmer coming up just about the same time, year before last, a month and a half apart. And the Royals really felt the two of them were the cornerstone of the middle of their order, along with Billy Buck for the next. 10 years. And neither Mustakas or Hosmer has done anything to uh, calm that feeling at all. They're both projecting very, very well. Mustakas, though, gone on strikes here as Lowe worked him over pretty well. Yeah, he started him out with a changeup, a 90 mile an hour fastball, and a good hard breaking ball. Pretty sharp for his second appearance. Made Mustakas look bad, made Hosmer look bad, too. Mike Maddox trying to figure out how he's going to tell all of his other pitchers. Now, you guys got to work all four or five weeks down here in spring training when you get a 39 year olds going out there and doing that and was pitching to, what'd you say, nine year olds a couple nine weeks year old ago? Team. Yeah. Just had a pretty good team. If that's how he got ready for spring <laughs> training, they could hit him. Here's Salvador Perez. Hard hit ground ball. That's through for a base hit. Well, Perez will increase his batting average. He started that at bat, getting 314, or make that 414. And he will up that just a little bit. So he is aboard with two outs for Lorenzo Kane. Well, they've got five guys in their lineup hitting over 400. Gordon's over 500. Butler's not hitting 400, but he's hitting 340. One thing about a sinker ball pitcher, though, you will, you'll get it if you're ball is sinking well you're going to hit get a lot of ground balls and sometimes they're going to find holes first pitch to Lorenzo Kane just off the plate yeah down here is not a real good test I don't know if a sinker ball pitcher as hard as these infields are balls tend to shoot through here pretty well when they hit on the ground that's when you have to have people telling you all the time hey you're getting your work in don't worry about it Pitches inside, it's two and zero. Oh. Yeah, and I guess you can even you can say if, if you watch the pitches and they're down and they're sinking and they're ground balls and they're running through the infield. Well, the stats won't look very good, but maybe the execution of the pitch is still pretty good mm -hmm. if you're getting the ground balls. Ah! From a pitcher standpoint, though, you got you need to get an out every once in a while to make yourself feel halfway decent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you just. One of them go at somebody, please. Two one pitch. There's another chopper. That was up the middle for a base hit. Checking in at second base is Perez. So back to back two out singles. Runners at first and second. And Jeff Francoeur coming up. Yeah. 
Well, they think that Kane, if he stays healthy, can be a very good player for him. He's a center fielder. He's got speed, got a little bit of power. Kane has been a 290 and 300 hitter throughout his minor league career. He's got a lot of minor league at bat, so he's ready. And it should be his year to step up and prove that he's a big league player. They're counting on that. One of the players that they got in the trade for Zach Greinke got mm -hmm. him from Milwaukee. Pitch to Frank Cool is just a little bit high for ball one. They got Alcides Escobar from Milwaukee as well. And he turned into a frontline shortstop last year. Hit 290. Good hands, strong arm, good speed. And if Kane can develop into a similar kind of player, then trade with Milwaukee looks a little bit better. Kane, a big guy, and he looks to be the kind of player that's going to be a a power laden center fielder. It's a flow to Frank Coor. It's two balls and a strike. Frank Coor trying to bounce back from uh, kind of a down year. Spent a little bit of time with the Rangers a couple of years ago. Was a big part of that first World Series team the Rangers had in 2010. Frank Coor went from 285 to 235 last year. Dropped down 50 points and. 30 RBIs from the year before. Three and one the count to Frenchy. Perez at second base, Kane at first base. Three and two. Well, able to throw that breaking ball close enough to get the swing. So a full count with two outs now. Perez and Kane will be off on the next pitch. Frank Coor looking for a fastball, but he didn't get it. Payoff pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Behind the bag, Elvis. Off balance throw, and he got it. Well, a nice play by Andrews. Made that play look pretty simple, but it was anything but. Royals have a couple of two out base hits. They strand two after one and a half. Rangers won, Royals nothing on TXA 21. This Rangers baseball on TXA 21 is sponsored by Sonic, America's drive-in. This is how you Sonic. And by Southwest Kia. Check out their deals at southwestkia.com. This crowd on hand here tonight at Billy Parker Field at Surprise Stadium. Rangers leading the Kansas City Royals 1-0 as we head to the bottom of the second inning. They will be the bottom third of the Ranger order to face Irvin Santana. That means Mitch Moreland to start things off. And the first pitch to Mitch he is a knee high strike. Moreland getting the uh, partial evening off tonight. He was up in Las Vegas over the weekend with the modest contingent of uh, Ranger regulars. Mitch has hit safely in eight of his last 10 ball games. Puts the ball the other way and 
deep in the hole at short is the third baseman Moustakas, and the throw is late. And that's going to be a base hit for Mitch Moreland, who went the other way nicely. And there wasn't a, a whole lot that Mike Moustakas could do over there. He played it about as well as he could. Well, Moustakas, they've got a little bit of a shift on. Moustakas is the third baseman, played over a little bit toward shortstop. Well, it's kind of a different throw than he would be more accustomed to making from third base. Ball gets away from him just a little bit, a little bit high. Mitch might have beaten out anyway. Well, the fourth Ranger base hit of the evening. And Mitch is aboard, and here's Craig Gentry. Well, Mitch looked like he got down the line pretty well on that. He did. You know, he's lost somewhere between 8 and 10 pounds. Not that he ever looked overweight, but he was big, thick. He's a lot thinner right now. And I have to think he gets down to first base quicker than yeah. he did last year watching that play. I agree with you. Gentry. Showing bunt. Pulled the bat back. It's a ball and a strike. One thing that Craig has been working on very diligently this spring. And hopefully he will he won't forget about it as he goes into the season. Some guys work on things in spring training, and that's the last you see of them until the next spring. I think Craig uh, really realizes that be able to use his speed the bunt can become pretty good weapon oh there goes Moreland he was walking <laughs> and three quarters of the way to second base and Santana didn't see him and by the time Santana let go of the ball Mitch was almost to second base watch this jump that's a pretty good jump right there catcher catches the ball and he's just at two-thirds of the way to second base I think Mitch beats out an infield hit still second look at this a young kid running around out there one attempt is fouled off, and it's two and two. I think that's what you call not giving your catcher a chance to throw the runner out. Pudge Rodriguez, Johnny Bench, and Bill Dickey rolled into <laughs> one. Couldn't have thrown him out on that one. <laughs> Speaking hey, of Pudge, there's Pudge. In camp this week, uh, doing some work with all the catchers that will uh, listen to him. Which I would think would be every one in the camp. Yeah, they're crazy if they don't. Yeah. Between Jim Sunberg and Pudge Rodriguez, if you can't learn as a catcher in this camp, forget it. 2 2 is Luke Fowl back into the seats. I just having Pudge around, just his energy. The aura that he presents. There's Sonny down there with the coaches. I think that's a great addition, addition to the Rangers. Pudge will be going around seeing a lot of the minor leaguers. Doing other various community things for the Rangers. Great representative to have in your organization. Mm -hmm. Again a tapper. This one foul behind the plate. And the count remains. Two balls, two strikes. Now between Pudge Rodriguez there and Jim Sundberg, they have seen probably everything that you can possibly think of and then some from the catching standpoint. I was talking to Ian and yeah, there's a lot of base runners can learn, I would think, from Pudge, too, with what a catcher's thinking about back there. Chopper to the right side. Good job by Gentry. He gets the runner over. Moreland on to third as Gentry is thrown out by Gio Vitella. An excellent job, though, of advancing the runner, even when he got two strikes. Greg didn't uh, forget about trying to hit the ball to the right side. You know, the other thing about Pudge as a catcher, uh, Buzz, he was a good base runner. Yeah. He could run for a catcher. Well, Moreland to third base now. And the Royals are going to pull the infield in with Julio Borbone up there. Good shot with up the middle of Escobar and Gio Votella just back of the cut of the grass. Corner men, Mustakas and Hosmer pretty much at the cut of the grass. Inside corner for a strike, a snap throw to third base, but Moreland back. Perez. Not a shy guy about throwing to the bases either. He's got a great arm. 0 and 1 the count to Bourbon. Julio hitting at 289. Has seven RBI this spring. We'd like to up that RBI total right here. Pitch in the dirt. Boy, what a job by Perez to block that pitch. That thing hit five feet out in front of home plate. Almost impossible for a catcher to judge where it's going to go. And Perez just swallowed that ball up. Look at that thing. Perez, a big guy, about 6'4", and well over 210 pounds. And 
and used his body size to really keep that ball around home plate. High chopper, and that's over the drawn in infield into left center down the, the line to score is Moreland. And Julio Borbone with the RBI makes it a 2 nothing Ranger lead. And one of those balls hit into the hard ground right out in front of home plate. It hit in the batter's box. Didn't hit home plate, although it bounced off the bat like it hit home plate. Not much you can do with the infield in. <laughs> Uh, two nothing Rangers now with five hits and Barbon with eight RBI for the spring. That takes the club back to the top of the order for Ian Kinsler. And Barbon very definitely a threat to try and swipe second. Hey, look at the way this uh, lineup is set up tonight. You got Kinsler and Andrews at the top, and at the bottom you've got Gentry and Barbon. Four guys in succession once you get down to the bottom of the order. They just are flying when they get on the base pass. Inside for ball one. Ian lined a single to center his first time, and Ron Washington. That's not an accident. Those four guys were put next to each other in the lineup. Washington loves to have the options that speed gives you in the lineup. Santana, a long look into Perez. Now the right-hander is ready. Breaking ball and is just off the mark. Two balls, no strikes. Ian in that first inning coming around to score. And anytime you talk to Ian, no matter what he's doing as far as batting average or anything else, he'll tell you his job from the leadoff spot is to score runs. He said, that's how I measure the kind of year that I'm having. And, uh, very few years has Ian not produced in that category for the Rangers. Three and all the count. And a fastball right down the pipe. Santana getting his work in. Euphemism for having a tough spring outing. <laughs> Let's see if Borbone is off with his 3 1 pitch. You would tend to think a guy like Borbone would be. Santana set. There goes Borbone. The pitch is lined to right field, a base hit. Borbone will not slow down at second. He is around on his way to third, and the Rangers playing first and third. Have runners at the corners, one out for Elvis Andrews. Well, I think just the first two at bats that Ian has had in this game pretty much shows what he needs to do this year to improve on his offensive performance from last year. First ball was a line drive up the middle. There's a nice line drive to right field. Nice inside out swing. And so many times last year, Ian kind of pulled off the ball, dropped his back shoulder, hit a lot of pop ups. But he has the ability to drive the ball back through the middle and to right center field. Uh -huh. And those two at bats so far in this game, hopefully that's a nice indication of what's to come for 162 games. And back with a half slide, and uh, he's at first over at third. Julio Borbone, Elvis Andrews at the plate, 0 for 1 as he ran it out to second base back in the first inning. There's a lot of second basemen would love to have the season that Ian had last year. And while it's not a bad season at all, based on his talent, he's capable of a lot more than that. Yeah, coming off a 30 30 year in 2011 and to fall short in both the categories last year, I, I'm not going to say it was frustrating, it was probably a little upsetting for him. Yeah, and you know, you can look at the numbers that he had last year. There goes Kinsler. The throw to second is late. Kinsler sliding in and uh, late covering the bag was Escobar. Staying at third is Borbone. So the stolen base for Kinsler. Borbone staying at third. Rangers now have runners at second and third and one out. Yeah, when, you, when you talk about Ian having a year that he's capable of doing better, that's because of the talent that he has. If you look at the year itself, you'd be hard pressed to complain about your second baseman 
scoring 105 runs, hitting 42 doubles, 19 home runs, as a leadoff hitter, knocking in 72 runs, and walking 60 times. That's a that's an excellent season yeah. for most second basemen, and it's a good season for Ian. I think what everybody says when they talk about Ian, though, he's so talented, he's capable of being even better than that. Yeah, and, and Ian would be right there at the front of that line telling mm -hmm. you that. Which is good. You, you like a guy that, uh, that understands that. So one ball and one strike. Rangers making some more noise here. They've scored single runs in each of the first two innings. Royals playing the infield back now with one out. Runners at second and third here in the second inning. Swing and a miss. It's a ball and two strikes. Elvis looking for something that he can at least hit in the air to the outfield. And Santana obviously looking for the strikeout if he can get it. The one two pitch. We'll try it again. Santana making his fourth start of the spring. Yeah. Line drive, base hit to center field. Barbone scored. Kane up with the ball. Kinsler coming to the plate to throw the side. He is out at home plate. They talk about Kane being an offensive type player. He's got a pretty good arm right there. How many center fielders in baseball are going to make a stronger throw than that? He charged that ball. It was a hard hit ball, so it got to him quickly, which helps. Ian was barely around third base when he fields this ball. But he charges it. No extra motion. He gets rid of it quickly and fires a one hop strike to the plate. Pretty nice throw. Great play. Is that pretty much textbook for an outfielder? I don't think you can do it any better than that. If you're going to make a training film, I think that's what you would show. <laughs> well, Elvis gets the RBI single. There are now two outs, though, after kids were shot down. And Rangers have up their lead. It's 3 0. Texas. Elvis now a 10 game hitting streak this spring. He has four RBI. And here's Lance Berkman. Takes the first pitch outside for ball one. Berkman had a chopping infield single his first time up. Rangers now seven base hits to go along with their three runs. Fastball at the knees. And it's one ball, one strike. As Tom told you, missing almost the entire 2012 season. Knee problems. There's a ground ball. Hosmer to the ground comes up with it. Nice play by the big man. And Berkman is out. Rangers are gone, but they score another couple of runs on four yards. A strand one. We finish two. Rangers three. Royals nothing on TXA 21.
the Ranger fans in attendance tonight. Happy as the Ranger fans watching and listening to us tonight are happy. The Rangers leading three to nothing as we head to the top of the third inning. Comfortable evening here at Surprise Recreation Campus. Ice cream in abundance being enjoyed by all. Johnny Giavatello will start things off against Derek Lowe. It'll be Giavatello then back to the top of the order for Alex Gordon and Alcides Escobar. And Derek Lowe comes in strike one. Derek's pitch count is pretty good after two innings buzz. No one throwing down in the bullpen yeah. right now. So a quick inning right here. He might be able to go back out and sneak in four innings today. A little bit outside, one ball, one strike. Well, Derek Lowe certainly knows what he needs to do to get ready. And as he told you, Tom, that first time in a long time he's had to worry about making a club, but it's kind of good. It uh, gets those competitive juices flowing. That's pulled hard but foul down the left field line. And the count moves to a ball and two strikes. Giovatella having a good spring at 297. He and Chris Getz in a pretty good uh, competition for the second base, the starting second base job for the Royals. Got him swinging. Good breaking ball, and Soto comes up with it and will toss on down to first base. That is strikeout number three for Derek Lowe here tonight. Great movement on his, on his off speed pitch. That's the third strikeout he's gotten with that slider. They've talked a lot about the right handers in the bullpen and the opportunity that's there. No one really has stepped up consistently in that regard. Battle for the fifth spot in the rotation. Saw Nick Tepish the other day, Robbie Ross, both of those guys pitched in Las Vegas. Randy Wells, Justin Grimm, two of the other candidates for that. Fifth starter, starter spot. But then you see Michael Kirkman throw three innings yesterday. Yeah. And if you see Derek Lowe throw four innings today, you know, who's to say that as wide open as it is that those guys don't become candidates themselves? And we're just speaking as announcers talking. We're not speaking the company line or what might be going on behind closed doors and what they're thinking. But the reality is Michael Kirkman did throw three innings yesterday and had a great outing. We'll see how Derek does today. 2-1 pitch coming to Gordon. It's hit hard, but fouled on the left side. Well, yeah, and Mike, Mike Maddox, when we had him on yesterday in Las Vegas, kind of alluded to that. He said, hey, look, we're going to keep our options open uh, mm -hmm. about these guys. You know, give us as many options as we can possibly have, and then we'll have more of a better basis to make a, a decision on. Yeah. So the players ultimately will make the decision for us, but, you know, you'd love to have a lot of options. Ooh, that, that had, had to be a strike. Missed. That had to be a strike. I guess it didn't have to be, but <laughs> being, like it. being on the Rangers broadcast team, we think it should have been a strike. It definitely came back. Joel Hospodka is the uh, home plate umpire, a minor league umpire, and that pitch is going outside for ball four. He got a walk, but he should have been punched out. Well, Gordon's been on both times, and he's faced Derek Lowe tonight, a single and now a walk, one away. Alcides Escobar. I don't think Gordon took that pitch because he thought it was a ball. No. I think he took it because he didn't anticipate that late movement was going to bring it back over the inside corner of the plate. You know, like you said before, Tommy, if you can't hit it, why swing at it? And I think that's where he was. <laughs> yeah. There's a good that's a great <laughs> example. Couldn't hit it. Take it and maybe the umpire will call it a ball. Escobar tried to uh, bunt his first time up when he had Gordon at first and nobody out in the first. Ended up popping out to Derek Lowe. I guess the other thing, Buzz, with things wide open, sometimes good fortune can play a part in it. And who knows what is going to happen with Derek. He could make the team as a reliever, battling for a role with the team. But if you Darvish starts tonight and pitches five or six innings, then he doesn't get the chance to pitch tonight right. and pitch four innings. Darvish is out. Going to skip his start tonight. Derek steps in. He takes takes advantage of the opportunity and opens some more eyes. Well, that's one of the uh, 
things about being experienced. You've seen those opportunities happen to other folks, and whether they've taken advantage of them or not, you understand how important it is to take advantage of those opportunities when they come your way. We talked when Derek pitched against San Francisco the other day. The start that he had in Cleveland last year, after seven or eight starts, he was four or five and one. His ERA was minuscule. And so I don't think that's lost on the Rangers. And now they watch him throw his, you know, his fastballs, 89, 90 miles an hour, pretty much where it has been the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. He can make it sink, throw strikes, mix in his other pitches. Maybe he does enter into the conversation as the fourth, as the fifth starter. Yeah, with both guys, most guys, I think Ron Washington and Mike Maddox would probably tell you, the last two weeks of camp is probably not enough time to get a guy ready as a starter until you look at a veteran like Derek Lowe who knows what he has to do. Right. Uh, he might be a guy that you can get ready in, say, four starts. Maybe. And we talked about this the other day, too, with the schedule the way it is. You could easily skip the fifth starter and work it in so that he does get a little more work right. before he gets his first start. If, again, we're just speculating, trying to throw all the possibilities out there that might exist. Now we throw enough stuff against the wall. Some of us yeah, got to stick. Know. Two and two, the count to Escobar. And excuse me, check roller to the first base side. Nice job by Berkman and Lowell. A couple of uh, grizzled veterans team up for the 3-1 put out. On to second goes Gordon. He's there with two outs now for Eric Hosmer. That's one thing that really tells when you have a pair of veterans like Berkman and Lowe with that particular play. There was never a moment's hesitation for either one of them. They knew exactly where they were supposed to go, who was supposed to go to the ball, who was supposed to go to the bag. That's, that's one of those little things that to me is a thing of beauty. Hard hit ground ball. Kinzer on the rim of the infield. Nice play. Up oh, so he got it. Osmer robbed by Ian Kinsler and the Royals again held off the scoreboard. No runs, no hits. The Walker left stranded after two and a half. Rangers three, Royals nothing on TXA 21. As the first Saturday home game of the Rangers season is April the 6th. It's a 3:05 start. The LA Angels will be in town. You don't want to miss the AL West showdown the first week of the season. And the first 30,000 fans will receive a Rangers calendar from Joanne Fabric and Craft Stores. Get your tickets now at TexasRangers.com. Ah! Urban Santana back to the hill. He and the Royals are trailing the Rangers by a 3 0 count. Adrian Beltre, the hitter, has one of those three runs driven in tonight. Which is a bit low. It's one ball, one strike. Rangers three runs on seven hits through the first two innings. Yeah, 
Santana's next offering. Oh, that's a rifle shot to left field, but this one hanging up for Alex Gordon. Just to one knee. I think it got up in the lights a little bit. He's able to stay with it for out number one. Adrian actually hit that ball harder than his RBI single first time up. So things do even out in baseball, and sometimes quickly. Nice <laughs> Gordon. See, yeah, that got my heart started. Got in those lights. And now Dave Murphy looks at strike one. Murph on via a fielder's choice. First time up, ground ball to second. Santana missing high and wide. It's one ball, one strike. Yeah, that pitch is low. Murph for the first time in his major tenure is going to have an opportunity to start as the opening day outfielder. He has pretty much been the extra outfielder year after year, and even though he's ended up getting better than 400 at bats every year, it has never been as an opening uh, opening month starter. That would be great for him. It's great acknowledgement of the work he has put into uh, the time of the play. There's a drive hit well to right field. Frank Coor going back. It is off the wall. Frank Coor with a great arm and a bullet in to get Murphy, and he is out on the return throw from Gio Botella. That's, that's a tough play for a batter and a base runner. He just hit the ball so hard, and Frank Coor played it so quickly off the wall. Frank Coor, like Kane, has an excellent arm, and as David got to second, he saw Frank Coor's throw, felt like he wasn't going to be able to get to second. The problem was he was already far enough towards second, he couldn't get back to first either. I don't think there's any doubt that that throw would have been a one hop throw to second base and caught David there. Yeah. Just kind of got in no man's land. <laughs> Not much you can do about that. Just so hit, he, it, hit it too hard. He was going to be out at one of the two bases, yeah, right. whichever one. <laughs> I guess he might as well keep going to second just in case the shortstop drops the ball. Well, the second time tonight, the Royals have had an outfield assist. And Frank Coor, of course, uh, year in and year out, one of the assist men in the outfield for Major League Baseball. So to a ground ball to third, Mustakis across the diamond, and that'll do it. The Rangers get a base hit, but a nice play by Frank Coor and company. Here is David Murphy. We're going to the fourth. Rangers three, Royals nothing on TXA 21. Back at Billy Parker Field at Surprise Stadium. Rangers have a 3 0 lead over Kansas City. And Eric Lowe's night is finished. Ron Washington has gone to the bullpen and come out with the 22 year old left hander Joe Ortiz, which is something because all the fans are getting excited about this young guy. Well, he's given a pretty good reason, too. He hasn't given up a run yet. Eight innings, he struck out seven, only walked one, only given up three hits. He's thrown a lot of strikes, worked quickly, 
And for a young lefty with not much experience, he's going about his business like he's been in the big leagues for a long time. He keeps throwing like this, he's going to be in the big leagues for a long time. Might just be there in April. <laughs> Now he will face the heart of the uh, Kansas City order. That means Billy Butler, the DH and cleanup man. He takes strike one. Ortiz from Caracas, Venezuela. Facing Billy Butler, who grounded out the shortstop his first time up. Out of play. And it's 0-2. That's something I think that has impressed everybody about Joe Ortiz is his desire and ability to come in throwing strikes. He this guy, this guy's one of the best hitters in the league right here. Yeah. You come at him with two fastballs and the second one he fouled off. He's a little bit late on it. There's number three. Call strike three. <laughs> and Butler says, wait a minute, who is this guy? 92 miles an hour, plenty of velocity, probably a little <laughs> sneaky to go along with it. A little cut fastball to the outside. No doubt it was a strike. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. If you keep throwing like this, there's no way you can keep him off the team. Ball one inside to Mike Moustakis. Moustakis, against Derek Lowe the first time, went down swinging. On the outside corner, and Ortiz gets the strike on the breaking ball. Derek Lowe, by the way, three innings of work, three hits. Shut out baseball on one walk and three strikeouts. An unqualified success. And I think, you know, Derek was not pleased with his first inning of work his first time out. But I think he'd be pretty pretty pleased with the way things yeah, went tonight. I think he has to be pleased with the way he threw the ball today. He kept the ball down. It looked like he had good command of his pitches tonight. And it looked like he got a little better each inning, too. Yeah. You can tell. I mean, this is the best hitting team in baseball right now. They're hitting 335 as a team. And he made them take some bad swings tonight. Mm -hmm. That was nice to see. Moustakis is able to lay off that breaking ball from George. Tins. Two balls, two strikes. To left field, Murphy coming on, got a good break on it. Can't come up with a short hop as it skitters off his glove. And Mike Moustakis dumps a line drive just out of the reach of David Murphy. A one out single puts him aboard and Salvador Perez will come up. Well, Merck did about everything he possibly could. He got a very good jump on that ball, but the ball just had too much sink to it. A one on, one out. Perez had a ground ball, base hit through the hole on the left side. His first time to the plate. Takes a fastball inside corner. Ortiz, a check of first. Could be two if Elvis can get it to Kinsler in time. He does on the first. A 6 4 3 twin killer. That takes care of the new stock of single. But Joe Ortiz faces three hitters. And they are gone in the fourth. Three and a half in the books. Rangers leading three to nothing on TXA 21.
continues April the 8th through the 10th. The Rangers take on the Rays from Tampa Bay. The series concludes with a 105 start on Wednesday afternoon. And you won't want to miss the first Nolan Ryan Beef dollar hot dog day of the season. Call 972 Rangers for tickets today. Yeah, a little, little cool breeze, maybe, blowing in. It's you spent the entire day in the sun, I guess. If the uh, sun goes down, you start to cool off pretty quick. That's perfect out right now. It is beautiful. Mitch Moreland leading things off against Urban Santana in the Ranger fourth inning. Texas on top, 3 0. And Mitch takes the strike. Moreland, an infield single. He went the other way with a Santana pitch leading off the second inning. Came around to score. Here, Marta, peanuts. Rangers with eight base hits through the first three frames off of Urban Santana. Chopper foul, and that makes the count no balls and two strikes. Mitch with that base hit in the second now. He's hit safely nine of his last 11 ball games. He had one of the three Ranger home runs yesterday and then win over the Cubs up in Las Vegas. Now this one back to the left. And the count remains 0-2. Marlon and uh, Joey Gallo, the youngster from Las Vegas, who just joined the Rangers minor league system last year out of high school. Get two balls that probably traveled close to a thousand feet between them. In light air or nothing, or wind or nothing. And that's a long. I'd like to see where both of them would have gone in this ballpark because you could have seen them bounce. They obviously yeah. would have gone all the way over the grass and into the street out there. They would have been over that tent that's on the right hand side of your screen. The one that the gallo hit anyway. Yeah, I'd like to see where they hit in the parking lot. One two pitch. And that evens the count to Mitch. Now the two two offering. Check swing. Did he go? No, he did not. Down to third base, the hands down safe sign. Good call. Didn't go. Well, the count is full to Mitch. Mitch trying to get aboard to start the Ranger fourth inning. He'll be followed by the center fielder, Craig Gentry. And that's high and outside. So Mormon draws the leadoff walk. Good job of battling Santana after falling behind. For Santana, that is the first walk that he has issued tonight. More than the board to start things off, and here comes Craig Gentry. Ranger Spring winding its way down as you're on Washington saying, yeah, we're getting down to the point where things are going to start to pick up as far as the Guys playing uh, more in games and, and going back to back games and getting late into the game contest. Rangers open the season in Houston uh, two weeks from last night. Ron Washington likes where his club is right now as far as the shape they're in. Everybody's healthy, with the exception of pitchers that uh, they already knew, Colby Lewis and Joaquin Soria, were not going to be ready in time. But for the most part, everybody has come through spring training thus far pretty good shape. Breaking ball from Santana, just a bit low. One and one to Gentry. Rangers tomorrow go over to Mesa to play the Cubs. Finish up uh, their four-game series in the spring against Chicago tomorrow. Then an off day on Wednesday. And then they finish up with six games before they come back home. There goes the runner, a hot shot, backhanded by Escobar. He picks it and checked more when he couldn't get in. He does get Gentry at first. Nice play by Alcides Escobar. Escobar, I think, really came into his own last year. He was a terrific player. He hit over 290, so offensively he was very good. Stole a lot of bases. He's got a very strong arm. He's a terrific shortstop. That's a tough play. The ball's almost by him. 
And that was not an easy hit, easily hit ball. That was a smash by Gentry. Turn that into an out. Very nice play. The one out, Moreland, because he was running on the pitch at second base now safely. And here's Julio Borbone, who had an RBI single on a chopper over the drawn in infield. Perez going after the ball gets away from him, and Moreland hesitated, but then advanced to third, and Perez kind of had his back foot slip out from under him as he was going to make a throw. That'll be a wild pitch, and get Moreland now 90 feet away with one out for Julio to pick up. Yeah, Julio's in the exact same spot in the second inning when he hit. Mitch got on, stole second, moved over on a ground ball. And Julio chopped one in the left field over the shortstop's head for a base hit to drive him in. Again, the infield in, one ball, no strikes. There's another high chopper. That's over the draw. <laughs> Gia Botello went up the ladder, didn't have enough runs to get there. In the score is Morgan Barbone. Carbon copy hits, one to the left, one to the right. And the Rangers lead four to nothing. That's where you're really benefiting by having the infield in right there. Two routine ground balls turn into base hits. Two for two with two RBIs. Said, so, you know, you get me one time, I'll pull this one and you but tell him not playing high enough. He's going to start that playing a little bit taller at second base. So Bourbon now nine RBI for the spring. He's at first. Still just one out. Here's Ian Kinsler for his third at bat of the night. Toss to first and Bourbon back. Kinsler two for two. Single to center, single to right. And Tom told you he's done a good job both times. Of taking the ball right back through the middle of the field where it was pitched. And a strike. Belt high outside corner. Bourbon continuing to add to his RBI total and to his batting end. He's now up over the 300 mark for the spring. Toss to first. And back with a headlong dive. Gary Pettis, the major third base coach, keeping an eye on things. Kinsler takes off the plate inside one and one. And walking down. Probably had to do a little studying in the offseason to get himself back into third base coaching mode about uh, giving signs. Every third base coach has kind of their own little little method to their madness of giving signs. It's been a while since he's oh. been over there. I bet there were too many days in the offseason where he didn't practice giving yeah. signs. I'll bet you're right. Looks like an easy job when you sit up here and watch the third base coach, but there is definitely an art buzz. Relay the sign from the dugout to the players, especially when there's a possible squeeze play. And you've got a couple of men on, a ball in the gap, and you've got to wave one, maybe hold the other, wave them both home. Mm -hmm. Tough job, boy. Ron Washington for 11 years in Oakland was the third base coach up there. Santana ready. Check the first, the 1 1 pitch. That ball is blasted to left field. There she goes. Goodbye. And he hit a couple of fastballs the first two times up. Time's up. Back through the middle. That time Santana hung a curveball. Got it up in the air, and there's no doubt about it. Pretty nice night for him. A couple of singles, scored two runs, and he's driven in a couple. Kinsler, a two run blast, and the Rangers lead six to nothing. Kinsler with his first spring training home of the year. That's Ooh, not a real good man. pitch. <laughs> you know, we talked the other day about those hangers that stayed up so high you couldn't get to them. That was not that high. No, that was just right in the hitter <laughs> zone right there. That thing was screaming, hit me from the time I left Santana's hand. And Ian obliged. Here's Elvis, and he takes outside. Two balls and no strikes. They still just one out. He's put three on the board here in the fourth inning. Also reached double figures with ten base hits. And that's very high. 
Three and zero. Ginsburg with three of those ten hits. Or Bone with a couple. Moreland with one. Murphy with one. Beltre and Berkman with one. And Elvis with one. That's been up and down the lineup. Hits are spread out, but the runs have only been scored by three people. No, Ian, Mitch, and Julio each scored twice. The Reds out to have a chat with Santana. 3 0 pitch now. And that is a strike. Elvis, an RBI single, drove in his fourth spring run last time up. It's this one hard, but to Mustakas, who plays a tricky hop nicely. He's out number two. You know, Elvis is one for three as he makes a right turn at first base, heads back to the Ranger dugout. And Lance Berkman will come up for his third at bat. Talking about the Rangers' uh, schedule the rest of the way. Don't forget 28th, which is a week from uh, Thursday. Rangers will give you the first opportunity to see them at Rangers Ballpark in Arlington this year. Let's take on the Mexico City Red Devils in an exhibition game. And go down to the Alamo Dome to play the first ever baseball game in that 20 year old facility. Taking on the Padres on March 29th and 30th. Berkman lost a towering fly ball down the left field line. Foul territory and Gordon can't quite catch up with it. That makes it one and one to Berkman. On the 29th the Rangers Padres game at the Alamo Dome is a seven o'clock affair. And then on Saturday the 30th it's a 105 start. Interesting to see how that Alamo Dome is going to play baseball wise. It's, I remember when I was growing up, the Dodgers came out to Los Angeles the first couple of years out there. They played in the old LA, LA Coliseum, which was a football facility. Yeah, I remember that. Had a 250 foot left field foul line, and right field was 444 feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they said right field is going to be 285 feet. The Green Monster is not much more than that. No. So. You know, I don't think it'll play that bad. No. How many balls are hit right down the line like that? More than 285 feet in the game. You might see a couple of them. One two pitch. Check swing. He went around. And Berkman gone on strike. Santana out of the inning, but Rangers come up with three runs. A big blast to Ian Kinsler's first home run of the spring. A two run blast, and we go to the fifth inning. It's the Rangers six and the Royals nothing. On TXA 21. Twenty one is sponsored by TXU Energy for home and business. Beautiful 
moonlit scape in the desert. As we head to the top of inning number five, it'll be the bottom third of the Royals order to face Joe Ortiz, Lorenzo Cain, Jeff Francoeur, and Johnny Giovatella. First pitch from Ortiz is ball one. Cain, a base hit right back through the middle. His first time up, that was off Derek Lowe. Low, in case you missed it, worked the first three innings. Gave up three hits, no runs, with a walk and three strikeouts. Very efficient evening for Derek Lowe, and Joe Ortiz has picked up right where Lowe left off. He had just come in firing strikes and getting out. Fly ball down the right field line. Long run for Borbone. He can't get there. Got the play on a hop. Big turn at first by Kane, and he puts the brakes on. So Kane's two for two. A leadoff single here in the fifth inning. And it'll bring up Jeff Francoeur. Yeah, Ortiz has been pitching one inning, one inning at a time. And I think it probably most of those innings he's thrown 15 or 16 pitches. It's such a quick inning. Wash going to throw him out there for another one. Francoeur, a ground ball was short. Up the middle. Kinsler, a dive. He has it. Underhands to Andrew. Back to first. A marvelous 4 6 3 double play. Oh, have a night, Ian. Second double play for Ortiz. They had a 6 4 3 double play last inning. Beautiful play by Ian. Tough hop. Had a stretch and show his range going to the right. And he's still got to make an accurate flip. Can't do it much better than that. Holy cow. Three for three with a two run home run and a play like that. It's only the fifth inning. What else has he got in store for us? So base is empty two away now, and Johnny Giovatella is up there. He takes ball one. Giovatella, a strikeout victim, his first time to the plate. One ball, one strike against Ortiz. Seen his fastball, it's 91, 92 miles an hour. Pretty good breaking ball that he's thrown for strikes tonight. And now an excellent changeup. He's got all the pitches, and he can throw them for strikes, at least from what we've seen. And that was a good difference, too, a, a velocity between his fastball and his changeup, about nine miles an hour. Nine, eight, nine, ten miles an hour is pretty good, pretty good spot to do it. Yep. Not so slow that the hitter can adjust to it. And it's coming out of his hand. He's got kind of a little short arm arm motion. It's got to look like the ball's getting on you a little more quickly yeah, than normal. I think it does. He's got pretty good velocity on his fastball to begin with. And then with his delivery, I think it makes it a little sneaky, too. That ball was almost by the Giovatella. He just fought it off down the right field side. The thing that stands out is what everybody has been saying about Ortiz the fact that he just gets the ball and throws one strike right after the other. Not messing around out there. He's ready now and again the one two pitch. Got him swinging. That change up again to Giovatella and he strikes out for the second time tonight. Well, the Royals, no runs, one hit and nobody left. We're halfway through the ballgame. Rangers six, Royals nothing on PXA 21. Only Mazda.
Well, fans, if you subscribe to MLB.TV Premium today, you can watch over 150 select spring training games live. Plus, uh, every regular season game is available live, out of market, or on demand on over 250 mobile and connected devices. Visit TexasRangers.com for details. Now, he would figure you'd have one Royal fan, one Ranger fan here in uh, Surprise, Royals and Rangers since 2003 have shared this complex of Surprise, and it's been a great combo for the two of them. Uh, they play each other in four or five or six times even during the spring, and minor league teams benefit too because you've got somebody else to play against in another organization. That's a look I never used or saw when I was the age of those two kids. The hat with the straight belt. Yeah. We used to we used to crush it, turn it around, have a big bend in it. Uh -huh. How about you? Yeah. To go yeah. with a little league crush? Well, yeah, it did. Tim Collins, the uh, new pitcher, takes over for Urban Santana. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we had some guys that crushed it three times. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it bent, bent it in the middle and yeah. then on each end. Right. I went with a rounded look. I did, too, because that's what uh, all the major league players yeah. I saw had. Adrian Beltre facing Tim Collins. Collins, uh, one of the guys that just came back also from the WBC, World Baseball Classic. He was on the American Club uh, along with Eric Hosmer. Just got back into camp a couple of days ago for the Royals. Beltre, one out of two with an RBI. That ball is hammered. Deep left center field. It is up the alley and off the wall on a hop. Beltre cruising into second base with a rifle shot double. That was a nice, according to the scoreboard, a 97 mile an hour fastball. Collins has a good fastball. I don't know if I've ever seen him throw one 97 before, but he's usually around 92 to 94. Whatever it was, it went out just as hard as it came in. You say maybe that got measured off the Beltre's bat. <laughs> Might have been off the bat. Sometimes <laughs> that happens. Oof, that got out there in a hurry. No, Beltre, the leadoff double, stands at second. Here's David Murphy, who is one for two tonight. Rangers now 11 hits. Chopper up the middle. Near the bag at second is Escobar. On to first. Murphy's retired. On to third goes Beltre. He's there with one out for Giovanni Soto. That's the fourth time tonight the Rangers, with a man on second and no outs, have moved the runner over to third base. And the appropriate uh, high fives, low fives. The Ranger dugout for David Murphy, acknowledging uh, his self sacrifice. The infield in with a man on third hasn't been working too good for the Royals <laughs> tonight. They're going to back up just a little bit with Giovanni Soto up there. Not at the cut of the grass, they're just behind the baseline. Giovatella and uh, Alcides Escobar. But yeah, you're right. The uh, the chopper is just chop it into the ground. <laughs> Good fastball for a strike. It's one and one. Giovanni 0 for two, a strikeout and a ground ball to third. Soto and Gentry, the only starters tonight, without a base hit for the Rangers. Good breaking ball for Collins. And it's one and two. And this is one of those guys who's not a tall guy. But he throws like a tall guy. He's got a great fastball, mid 90s fastball, and a good curveball. He can pitch off, and he's a strong kid. Another breaking ball, and that just did miss. That could have gone either way. Yeah. That one went Giovanni's way. Might have been a little high. Yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> fastball got it. Change up, I think. Did it change up? It was. It looked like a fastball. Now Soto gone. Big strikeout for Tim Collins with the runner at third and less than two out. And now the infield will go back. Yeah, you're right. He's got some good stuff. You're talking about that 10 mile an hour difference. Uh -huh. It was 84 and 94 with a curveball to go with it. That's why he's put up the numbers he's put up. No, two away now. It's left-hander against left-hander. Mitch Moreland up there. And Mitch has been aboard and scored a run each time tonight. He's one for one with a walk also. It's that breaking ball. Oh, one and oh. One thing that uh, 
pitch that he wanted to have if possible was the opportunity to face left-handers this spring. And Ron Washington said, hey, you're going to be my everyday first baseman. You're going to face everybody. And the pitch has uh, done well this spring against left-handed pitching. Yeah, this will be one of those matchups that he'll probably see sometime during the season. Middle of the ball game, late in the ball game. Men on base, close game. Ned Yost brings in this left-hander to face Mitch. Oh, it's a good battle right here. Two balls, no strikes to Mitch Moreland. Chopper to the right side. Gets under the glove of Hosmer. Giovatello is back there. The throw is not in time to get Moreland as Collins tried to catch the throw from Giovatella and get the bag in the same motion. Couldn't do it. And that is going to be a base hit and an RBI for Mitch Moreland. It is seven to nothing, Texas. That was the second infield hit for Mitch. Last time he had an infield hit, he stole second. Let's see if he does it again. Tough play for Hosmer. He lets it go. Second baseman. I don't know if he threw it accurately. Would have been a really close yeah. play if Collins could have tagged the bag. For Looks the second like time today, Mitch got down to first base. Yes, he nicely. did. Looked like Tim Collins might have slowed up a little bit too when he thought uh, Osmer was going to catch the ball. Well, here's Craig Gentry. And the first pitch to the Rangers center fielder is high for ball one. The Rangers now seven runs on a dozen hits this evening. We play in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Gentry skies one to shallow center. So Kane ambling in and over to his left puts it away. And that will do it. The Rangers though come up with another run on a couple of hits. They lead one after five full innings of play. It's the Rangers seven, the Royals nothing on TXA 21. Your spring training baseball here at uh, Surprise Stadium, Billy Parker Field, and uh, the Rangers tonight have had it all their way. Seven runs on 12 hits as they lead Kansas City seven nothing. Glad to have you folks in. This is the first night game for the uh, the Rangers this year. It's nice to get back into the lights. Feels like real baseball with the the real starting lineups and guys going deep in the game. You can't get a better night than this. The Rangers are playing a great game. They've scored. Seven runs. They've had excellent pitching. They've yeah. made some tremendous defensive play. So two five innings combined with a beautiful night that it is. Nice crowd. Everything's going our way right now. And Nate Robertson, the veteran left-hander, on now to face the top of the Royals order. That means Alex Gordon. Robertson having a very good spring. As almost every left-hander in contention for a bullpen spot is. Left handers have gone gone nuts. His numbers are almost the same as Joe Ortiz. Very few hits, hasn't given up a run. I don't know how many spots there are for left handers in our bullpen, but there's a lot of candidates, that's for sure. Eight innings, a couple of walks, 
Doesn't have the strikeouts Ortiz has. Bonus batting average only 115 against him. And all those zeros up there, you find you tend to find a spot for people that have that many zeros in their lines. Self reinvented Nate Robertson, 35 year old. And Gordon laces one to right field, backpedaling a bit is Julio Bourbon. And well, shy of the warning track. Julio able to nab it. That is out number one. And Nate Robertson, who was a, pretty much a conventional left handed pitcher earlier in his career, and he had some pretty good success, but he had to reinvent himself. And one way he did it, he owns the Wichita Arrows of the. Uh, or wing nuts, I should say. Minor league club. He was able to work for himself and pitch down there and try this stuff out against hitters. When you're the owner, you pitch every day if you want. I would think so. Andy to have that. Did that uh, last year and also pitched Las Vegas and Iowa. There's a little loop around in the shallow right field. Going back is Kinsler. He and a good jump on the ball. Able to grab it, so Escobar. A base hit taken away from him, and uh, Julio Borbon giving me and Kinsler a little what for on that. So two gone. Robertson has retired both Gordon and Escobar. Now Gary Cosmer comes up. And Osmer first ball swing, skies one to left. That chases David Murphy back. He's in front of the warning track. And Murphy puts it away. And a very quick and tidy one, two, three inning for Nate Robertson. Royals gone in order after five and a half. It's the Rangers seven, the Royals nothing on TXA 21. Night leading seven to nothing as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. And the new pitcher on the hill for Kansas City. It'll be former starter, now part of the bullpen, Luke Hochaber. Yeah, I think it's been a, a number of years that the Royals have been counting on Hochaber to step up and become a frontline starter. He's shown signs of it, but the consistency hasn't been there. He's got good movement on a sometimes mid 90s fastball. And the thought is now that he can be very valuable coming out of the bullpen. So no longer a starter, but can still be a huge contributor to the Royals out of their bullpen. And a couple of, uh, of other changes for you. A new, uh, new shortstop, Anthony Saratelli, has come on to uh, take over for Asidus Escobar. And over at first base, it'll be uh, former Ranger Max Ramirez takes over for Eric Hosmer. Oh, Chamber set to work. Julio Borbon, who is two for two with a pair of runs scored and a pair of RBI, steps in and takes inside for ball one. 
There's Max. There is uh, having a good spring. Yeah, he's joined the hit parade himself. Next offering from Hochaper. That's on the inside corner to even the count. Bowen now with nine RBI for the spring. O'Javer back to him. Breaking ball is cute foul down the third baseline. Luke Oldfieber, I think, his, his demotion to the bullpen really surprised a lot of uh, people that have followed the, the Royals closely. They figured that uh, he was going to be one of the starters to fit in with the, the new acquisition, Santana and Shields and Wade Davis. But Ned Yo said, nope, that spot for Luke Oldfieber right now would help us is in the bullpen. Well, last year he was 8 and 16 and had a 573 ERA. We've seen him pitch against the Rangers and tune up a couple of nice, nice, nice ball games, but just didn't have the consistency. The ball doesn't sink consistently enough. There's a good example: 96 mile an hour fastball, straight as a string, rip right back through the middle by Julio. Well, Bow now three for three is he just laced one right back through the box. Good job of hitting by Borbone. Ian Kinsler's night. Is over. And if the Royals thought they got off easy, forget it because Jeff Baker is taking his place. Jeff Baker may be the second hottest hitter in the Cactus League, that only behind Alex Gordon. Jeff Baker having his average drop significantly from the 500 plateau. Baker's really in a slump now all the way down to 488. That after going one for three yesterday. Oh, Chamber, a checker first. Speedy Julio Borbone anchored over there, and Oh, Chamber goes that way. Baker. Safely in 10 of his last 11 games at 625 average with three walks in there. Pitch down a little bit low. It's two balls, no strikes. Oh, Chaver struggling a bit, which has uh, apparently been the problem that the Royals have seen him have. Trying to get him. Into the bullpen, get a little bit of the stressfulness out of his uh, pitching outings. See if they can't turn it around for him. Baker fouls the next pitch high in the air and that will twist out of play on the right side. Two balls and one strike. The 31-year-old waiting for Hochaver's offering. Swing and a miss, and it's two and two. Baker and Camp is uh, really a candidate for a backup role of infield outfield. He has the versatility that makes him ideal, along with the offensive prowess that he's showing this spring. That a great uh, utility candidate. Last year, spent time with. Three different clubs. Cubs, the Tigers, and the Braves. At the most time in Chicago, he played in 54 games with the Cubbies. Well, Chaver again going first base way to drive Borbone back. Range 
Rangers signed Baker as a free agent this past January. Breaking ball got him swing. Okay, with a good hook. And Baker and strike out Dickon. That is one away. Hochaver you know, in that at bat, you saw this kind of stuff that can be dominating stuff. The the sinker that he swung at, the 95 mile an hour sinker with good movement, was a great pitch. And finished him off with a nice curveball too. And like his uh, middle infield mate, Elvis Andrews finished for the evening. And Harris Solarte is just getting infielder. Up there with an opportunity to face Hoach Abert. He takes high for ball one. And there is another candidate uh, for a utility role. And he has become more and more prominent uh, among the utility candidates because of what he has done offensively. And he has shown the ability to play shortstop a little bit, which is necessary if you're going to be a utility candidate for Ron Washington. Now, if no one joins the team from outside the organization, he has to have a pretty good shot at being a utility infielder yeah. based on the way he's played. Two balls, no strikes to count. Corbone, a modest lead at first. Ochaber to the plate. That ball hit well to left field. Going back is Gordon. He's going back to the track and makes an over the shoulder count. All the way to second and retreating. Julio Borbone and boy, Salarte gave that a ride to the opposite field. Almost got it over Gordon's head, but Gordon, a very, very good outfielder, a gold glove outfielder, able to track it down on the warning track. Nice play by Alex Gordon in deepest left field. So two gone. Here is Lance Berkman, who is one for three tonight. Ochaver's first pitch misses wide. Look at Alex Gordon. Uh, came up as a third baseman. The uh, next George Brett, if you will. One of the many next George Bretts that Kansas City's had over the years. But Alex didn't quite pan out at third base, and uh, he has gone to the outfield and really thrived out there. Mentioning it's gotten the gold glove, and rightfully so. Chopper up the middle. Gio will tell him back to down. Has no play. Even had he come up with that cleanly on the dive, he was not going to get Bourbon because of Bourbon's speed at second. And uh, Berkman was going to beat that out. So Berkman will retire as Jim Adusi comes on as a pinch runner. Berkman and Moreland have each had two infield hits today. The Rangers have definitely hit their share of balls hard today. But they've also had more than their share of softly hit balls yeah. fall in. Both of those big left hand hitters have had two infield hits, and Julio Borbone has pounded two balls into the dirt and bounced them over, pulled in infielders. <laughs> so that's six of the 14 hits right there. And uh, Adrian Beltre will retire for the evening as Mike Old comes off and goes after the first pitch from Luke Hochaver, fouls it back to the screen. Mike Old hitting 172. Most of that damage, however, has been done lately. The two home runs of five RBI have come in the last couple of weeks. Get off to a miserably slow start, and Mike has really come on to swing the bat well. It's that breaking ball off the plate inside. One ball and one strike. George Brett in the uh, first base dugout. He's vice president with the Royals, vice president of baseball operations. Spends the entire spring down here working with guys being around camp. And the breaking ball that's in for a strike and it's one and two. George might have been the best natural hitter I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with you there. The kind of guy all like, the players I played against. I think he was one of my favorites for sure. And that's not to say he didn't work. He worked real hard at Did it, he? but he was just oh, so gifted. He could virtually do anything he wanted to with a bat. Pitch is a little bit low. 
you know, you hear the old saying, a guy get out get out of bed on Christmas Day and hit, and George, that was George. Uh -huh. George could get out of bed. He could hit a baseball or a golf ball, either one on Christmas Day, getting out of bed. He made it look easy. Yeah. Two and two, the count to Mike Holt. Or the runner at second. Jim Aducey, the pitch runner at first. Breaking ball, got him swinging. Pretty good hook from Hochaber. Hochaber ends up with a couple of strikeouts. Rangers strand a couple of runners on a pair of base hits. We finish six in surprise. Rangers seven, Royals nothing on TX. The Rangers really putting a thumping on the Royals for the first six innings. Seven nothing Texas. Fourteen hits for the Rangers. Five for the Royals. And one of the guys that uh, had a couple of those hits and scored a run or two. Lance Berkman. Lance, uh, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Good to see you out there at first base tonight. And I would imagine that was uh, a good test for you to put yourself through this evening. Well, I felt pretty good. Uh, you know, to watch it uh, actually about a week ago that I felt like I was ready to go out there. So glad they worked me in a game. And how about the transition to the Rangers, Lance? How have you enjoyed your early time here with the ball club? What kind of what kind of team do we have? Well, I think we I think we have a really <laughs> good team. Uh, I'm excited to be here. You know, the guys have been great, very welcoming. Um, it's a great atmosphere. You know, guys uh, like to work, they like to have fun, and uh, they love to win. So I think we're uh, you know I think we're going to be good this year, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Great. Right. Is it is, is there a comfort level that you have to I guess adjust to? Uh, when you move into a situation like this, I know you went from, you know, from the uh, Houston for so long to the different clubs, finishing up with St. Louis, then coming over here. Did those experiences help you as far as making adjustments to a new situation? Yeah, I think um, certainly if I come straight over here from the Astros after having been there for so long, it's uh, it would be a, been a much tougher adjustment. But having been on two other teams and having kind of gone through the whole process of getting to know your new teammates and trying to fit in and trying to acclimate and trying not to put too much pressure on yourself. Uh, it's uh, very beneficial to me to have those past experiences. And, um, you know, it's it's weird. The last two situations I've been in have both been really great with the Cardinals and now the Rangers. And in both instances, I felt like on day one or two that I'd been there for about five or six years. So that's a good feeling. Lance, as a veteran guy, you know exactly what you need to do to get ready for the season. Where are you right now in regards to being ready for the season? Um, you know, I, I feel okay. I'm, I don't. I'm not quite where I want to be with my swing yet. I still feel like I'm jumping at the ball a little bit. I don't have my timing. Um, but I, I feel good about my my swing from a mechanical standpoint. Now it's just a matter of getting enough at-bats to get comfortable with the timing. Is it harder for you as a switch hitter to get ready for the season, or is that not a factor? No, nah, it is. I mean, you know, because you try to get into a groove. I, I like to get myself in a groove left-handed first because right-handed I feel like uh, – you know, I don't bat that much right-handed during the, or not near as much as I do left-handed during the course of a season. So I like to feel good about my left-handed swing. And especially this spring, we've seen an awful lot of left-handed starters. So I think, I've, you know, maybe about uh, half and half at-bats left-handed or right-handed. So it is a little tougher to get into a, 
a rhythm when you're flip-flopping like that. But uh, the good thing is we have a long spring, and there's still plenty of time. What's your natural side? My natural side's right-handed, believe it or not, even though it's uh, not a very pretty swing. Uh, but, <laughs> how, um, old, how old were you when you first started to switch hit? When I was about five years old. Really? Uh, my dad started me, turned me around, figured if I could throw left, I ought to be able to hit left. So uh-huh. I've been doing it a long time. Wow. That's I'd say a... it's worked out pretty well for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i, I got to tell him thanks every time I see him because it, it sure it wouldn't be much fun hitting right, right-handed to get some of these tough right-handed pitchers. Yeah, coming over to, to the Rangers, uh, Lance, do you find uh, some of the younger players really seeking you out to, to pump you for answers to questions they have? Well, you know, they don't necessarily come to you. Some of them, I think, maybe a little nervous about that. But, uh, you know, they they definitely listen. And whenever you have something to say, you can tell guys are attentive that they want to learn. And uh, that's part of the game that I really enjoy is just talking to the younger guys and trying to pass on some of what I've learned, and, uh, you know, in the game to them. Lance, thanks very much for taking the time. It's a great pleasure to have you as part of the ball club. Right, Look guys, forward thanks. to talking to you a lot more this year. Thank you. Great defensive play by the Rangers by Angel Beltre. And we'll go to the uh, bottom of the seventh inning. Rangers on top, 7-0 on TXA 21. Texas Rangers baseball on TXA 21 is sponsored by Wendy's. Stop by Wendy's for a Baconator or son of Baconator. You decide how big you want it to go. And by SportsCityToyota.com. A beautiful night here in the Valley of the Sun. And we were talking to Lance Berkman when all this happened, but boy, Angel Beltre playing in center field as a defensive replacement. Really gets a couple of stars by his name for this catch. That's a beautiful catch. His his body was on the ground before he caught the ball. That's how far he had to stretch to make that play. It's about as nice a diving play as you can see it out there the night. He's one of those kids with excellent tools. Whether or not he's going to put it together offensively, time will tell. But he's got a lot to work with. He can throw. You can see that he can play center field. He can run. He's got to get a little consistent with the bat. Still a young player, though. There's Angel. Yeah, a young player, very, very talented player. <laughs> Boy, he is really something. Aaron Cunningham starting things off. Cunningham facing the newest Kansas City pitcher. That's Donnie Joseph in left hand. Numbers on uh, Donnie Joseph this spring. Very fine, 129 earned run average. The opposition in just a buck and a quarter against him. Cunningham, first at bat of the night. Yeah, kind of a defensive swing at that breaking ball. It is 0 and 2.
Joseph from the stretch. Breaking ball call strike three. Oh, Joseph turned Cunningham into a statue at home plate. You know, the coaching staff on the chairs in front of Nolan and Ruth Ryan in the front row. Nolan in his customary seat. One of the uh, advantages that uh, everyone enjoys in spring training is the closeness of the players and coaching staff to the fans. Jose Felix is the hitter. Took over last half inning for Giovanni Soto behind the plate. Jim Sundberg, one of the guys that kind of sneaked onto the field. If they knew he was there, he... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jim Jim down here spends a lot of time in uniform down here. He, uh, he really enjoys that working with the guys and being around the guys along with his other duties. But he enjoys getting that uniform back on and going to work every morning out here. Adam Moore, the new catcher. He got thumped by, by the backswing of Jose Felix on that last pitch. One catcher to another said, hey, I didn't mean to. Probably didn't make it hurt any less. One and one the count to Felix. One out, base is empty. We play in the bottom of the seventh inning. Rangers on top 7-0. One and two. Joseph back to the plate. And a breaking ball swung on a miss. It gets through Adam Moore's legs and back to the backstop. And that will be a wild pitch to allow Jose Felix to reach base. A strikeout wild pitch. And the Rangers have had just about every imaginable way tonight to get on base occur for him. Yeah, Joseph, two hitters have been pretty baffling the assortment of off-speed pitches he's thrown up there. Like a slider down and out of the strike zone. I imagine he's pretty tough to pick up too. He's got that short arm action. Ball comes right out from behind his head. And so as a hitter, you don't pick the ball up. I'm sure it makes his fastball look a little tougher. Combine that with the fact that a lot of the guys probably hadn't seen him before. Brandon Allen is the hitter. He's Hitting for Mitch Moreland. A rip and a miss. Allen takes over in the DH spot. Moreland tonight ended up going two for two, scored a couple of runs, drove in a run, and a walk. Now Brandon Allen, a 200 average, a couple of home runs in the spring. Sharp breaking ball from Donnie Joseph outside. Joseph last year pitched at three different levels of Pensacola, Louisville, and Omaha. Came over in July of last year. Takes outside. It was part of the Jonathan Broxton deal. In Omaha, the AAA affiliate of the Royals, he ended up working 11 ball games, all of them in relief. He has never started a game professionally. Always coming out of the bullpen. That's low and outside. Allen draws the walk. Runners now at first and second with one out. And Angel Beltre coming up. Well, Donnie Joseph trying to regroup now as he has had a pair of strikeouts and a walk. Of the strikeout. Jose Felix reached on a wild pitch on the third strike. Angel Beltre uh, most recently had that great diving catch in center field to end the top of the seventh. He is up there and he takes ball one.
1 0 delivery. That's low and outside. Johnny Joseph, uh, a Texan uh, out of the University of Houston. Grew up in Buda, Texas. Went to Hayes High School. Cincinnati drafted him back in uh, 2009. He was the third round selection by the Reds. And the pitch misses low. It's three balls, no strikes. Yost watching the uh, parade of pitchers come in tonight and have one kind of trouble or another against Ranger hitters. Yeah, Beltre draws the walk. So back to back left handed hitters draw walks against Donnie Joseph. And I'm sure that's something that uh, Ned Yost is going to write down in his. Or at least make a mental note of it as Dave Island, the pitching coach, goes out to have a chat. Yeah, Ned's also got to be thinking, you know, we haven't had many games like this this spring. I can, I can take this one based on being, yep. based on being 17 and four. He's got to be pretty happy with, with the way things have come together for him. Talked about how well the Royals have hit in spring training. They pitched better than they pitched in a long time so far in spring training. It's only spring training. But they've added some names in their rotation, and their bullpen was not their problem the last couple of years. They got some great arms out there. Bullpen. Right. Here's Jared Hoying in the pitch. He gets away from Adam Moore down the line into score with the slide. Here's Jose Felix. And the wild pitch plates the eighth run of the night for the Rangers. It's eight nothing Texas. Called it a wild pitch, but it looked like he could have caught that yeah. ball. That ball just kind of sailed on Adam Moore. It's a little bit low. Uh, again, we'll go back to that's one of the things that in spring training, catchers may not work with pitchers that much as they're catching. And boy, you get into a game situation and you feel kind of bad out there boxing a couple of pitches up because you haven't seen them before. A fastball strike. Joseph back to Boying who takes outside. And the count moves to three and one. Joseph, the 25 year old left hander, comes back to the plate. Drive to right field. And Frank Hoor makes the catch. A strong throw to the plate. And it is right on the money. Not even venturing a foot down the line. Brandon Allen stays tightly anchored to third, and Francoura a little wry smile of his. And yeah, another asset when you look at the Royals is the outfield play. We've seen it today from center field. Kane made a great throw home. Francoura's made a couple of strong throws. That's not a surprise. He's been a right fielder with a great arm his whole career. And you already mentioned that Alex Gordon's in a gold glover in left field, so their outfield defense is a definite strength mm -hmm. for them. Jeff Baker with his second at bat of the evening, and he takes outside for ball one. Baker struck out his first time up. That was last inning against Luke Hochaver. Now facing the lefter, left hander, Donnie Joseph. This is outside. It's two balls, no strikes. Joseph back to the plate. It's a belt high strike. And it's two and one. All the Rangers starters now are finished for the evening. And uh, they were pretty doggone good. The only ones that didn't have a hit among the starting crew uh, Greg Gentry. Oh, a rifle shot. That's a nice Leo Botella comes up with it. I don't know how in the world he did it. <laughs> and he may not be able to tell you. Oh, a rope. 
Well, that retires the side. Rangers, though, get another run. No hits. A couple of walkers have left stranded. We're going to the eighth. Rangers eight. Royals nothing on TXA 21. LLC and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rangers Baseball LLC. Yeah, the crowd out on the uh, ass berms in the outfield enjoying a very comfortable evening is the uh, Rangers have made it very uncomfortable for the Royals pitchers tonight. Eight nothing Texas. As we go to the uh, eighth inning now, and a new pitcher on the hill. Well, the Rangers will be Submariner Ben Rowan. You know, uh, another opportunity here tonight, and boy, he has been one of the guys coming out of the pen that has really been solid. Well, all the relievers tonight: Ortiz, Roberts, and. And Bowen, when you add him up, hadn't given up a run at spring training. Ben was called over from the minor league camp. And he's shown very well in the opportunities that he's gotten. Rowan's pitch to Lorenzo Kane is in for a strike. And it's one and one. Sky to shallow center field. Going out is Baker. Not pedaling a bit, and Jeff puts it away. That's out number one. He'll throw a fastball, and it won't light up a radar gun from that angle in the low 80s. That was a changeup in the low 70s. And he also throw a breaking ball from that submarine motion that kind of goes up and away to a right-hand hitter. And he throws a lot of strikes. Almost never walks anybody. That's a pretty good attributes for a relief pitcher. Yeah. Not sure what his opportunity is. But he's one of the right handers that's throwing with a lot of success in his four, three or four outings. And Coors shoots one down the right side. He's taking it on to the bag and he is out number two very quickly. You know, sometimes a pitcher can pitch very well in spring training and just not have the opportunity to make the team based on the makeup of the ball club. But at the same time, the better you pitch here, the better opportunity you have when you need a pitcher during the season. The manager, mm -hmm. the pitching coach have all seen you. The general manager has seen you. He's liked what he's seen. There's no reluctance when the opportunity arises during the season. So you may not make the team, but it doesn't mean you haven't made a strong impression that will help you as the season goes on to get your chance when it comes. Wash was talking about Chad Bradford, who pitched for Oakland, throws almost a carbon copy of the same motion, and felt that Ben Rowan's stuff compared very favorably. Chad Bradford had a number of good years. He was hurt, which I think affected his career a lot. But when he was at the top of his game, he was a very good relief pitcher. Yeah. 
Well, his next pitch is lined softly out to second. Right there is Jeff Baker. Well, it's a quick and tidy one, two, three inning for Ben Rowan and the Rangers. Seven and a half innings in the books from Surprise. Rangers eight, Royals nothing on TXA 21. Well, eight nothing to score. It's been all Rangers tonight as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. And Lewis Coleman, the right-hander, has come out of the Royals bullpen. He will work to the top part of the order. And here was Solarte to start things off. It'll be Solarte, Aduce, and Mike Holt. And Lewis Coleman fires a strike in there. It's 0-1. Spring numbers for Coleman, a very big part of that Royals bullpen. He has also had a good spring as Solarte fouls the pitch off the left. Yeah, he struck out last year as a relief pitcher for Kansas City. He struck out 65 batters in a little over 50 innings. Another one of those good arms down there. 0 2 pitch. Got him swinging. Solarte didn't realize the ball had. Uh, been dropped. And he takes off a little bit later, but still is thrown out by Adam Moore, and that is one away. So Coleman strikes out the first hitter he faces. Now Jim Aducey comes up. Aducey having a terrific spring, as those numbers would tell you. 424. Up the middle, and that's going to go up a bit there. They put a nice swing on that. Wow. Ducey not wasting any time. Boy, he just went up there and saw a pitch to his liking. Bam, look out. Nice short stroke, quick bat. Ducey can do a few things for yeah, you, too. He's got good speed. Help the Rangers during the season. Yep. In the meantime, Bobby Jones would be glad to have him. <laughs> Mike Old struck out his only time at bat tonight. He's got a Ducey at first base. One out here in the Ranger eighth inning. The ball is a bit low, and the count is now one and one to Old. Rangers now with 15 base hits tonight. The one one. It is one and two. Coleman back to the plate. It's in the dirt and Adam Moore does a good job of smothering that pitch. So 
Cardinals infield up the middle looking for that double play. Not going to be able to turn that one into two. Was Mike Holt, a crisp line drive to center for his first hit of the night. So back to back singles, two on with one out. And Aaron Cunningham coming to the plate. Stayed with that slider, did a nice job of going back through the middle with it. Well, Aaron Cunningham coming up. Cunningham called out on strikes as he came to the plate first time last inning. Coleman's first pitch. 0 and 1. Ducey, the runner at second. Mike Holt at first. Coleman to the plate. This is low and outside. And now Moore going to have a little chat with Lewis Coleman. As we mentioned the uh, Rangers tomorrow going to play the Chicago Cubs. Alexi Ogando gets to start down in Mesa tomorrow afternoon. That will be on a uh, on radio to be a delayed broadcast at seven o'clock central time tomorrow night. We'll be back with you on Thursday night right here in surprise again. We have the Los Angeles Angels and the Rangers game starting at eight o'clock central time. One ball, two strikes. Cunningham waiting. Coleman back to it. The right center field. In a hurry is Dyson. And he's able to make the catch. Gerard Dyson, the new center fielder out there. There's a lot of nice plays in the outfield today for both teams. Dyson yeah, has great speed for a center fielder. So Angel Beltre go the other way to make a nice sliding catch. That was a little bit easier. I don't know that he had to slide to make that. <laughs> Looked nice, though. Yeah. Give the dry cleaner something to do after yeah. the game. Get those grass stains out. Angel had to dive for his. No two gone now. Runner still at first and second. And here's Jose Felix. Felix. Last inning. Struck out but reached on a wild pitch. Came around to score eventually. And will have scored a wild pitch. This is the so far the eighth and final run. That the uh, Rangers have put up tonight. Bowman's 0-1 pitch. That's out of play to the right. And we'll have that game Thursday here for you with the Angels, and then the weekend games will be our last uh, televised games from down here in Surprise this year. We'll have Saturday afternoon for you from Goodyear against the Cincinnati Reds, and then turn right around and come back to Surprise, take on the Reds on Sunday. Oh, oh. Foul tip and that went into the dirt before Adam Moore could get grab a hold of it. So Jose Felix will uh, retain his at bat. Call by the umpire right yeah. there. A lot of times the umpire can't see that. He's right on top of it. Again, the 0 2 pitch. We'll roll her out towards short. It's going to be a tough play as Sarah Telly has <laughs> broken we, to his back. We've had every kind of base runner. There's a new. There's another one. Sarah Telly, the shortstop, but broken toward the bag for I, I don't know why. I don't know where he was going. <laughs> oh my goodness! Jose Felix will take it though. It's a base hit for him. Just fire the bat at it and get yourself a base hit. Apparently the only prerequisite he tonight. He broke the wrong way. He, he did. He, he broke the wrong way after the ball came off the bat. He might have been going saw, after the bat. He saw yeah. the bat go <laughs> that way and went after it. 
in any event. <laughs> Bases are now loaded with two outs. And Brandon Allen will get a chance to put more on the board for the Rangers. Allen walked his first time up. That was last inning. Watch the break that Saratelli gets. He did get a good break, though. Unfortunately, it was the wrong way. You know, the way he threw the bat and made contact with the ball, it probably was like an optical illusion to him when he saw the bat go that way. That's the way his instincts carried him. There's a line shot, but right at the... Second baseman Johnson. Well, that'll do it. Rangers uh, get three hits in the inning, but leave the bases loaded. We're going to the ninth inning from Surprise. It's the Rangers eight, the Royals nothing on TXA 21. The ninth inning has arrived, and uh, one more pitcher now for the Rangers taking the hill. It's Luis Alberto Bonilla, part of that three-player trade involving Michael Young and uh, Josh Lindblom, the winner back in December. Bonilla, 22-year-old from Samana in the Dominican Republic, one of the two guys that, uh, on the minor league side, when camp opened. And he and Ben Rowan were invited over to become part of the big league club because of their performances and opportunities that came their way. Right. It looks like he had a pretty good season last year when you look at those numbers 64 strikeouts and 46 innings, 191 opponents batting average. Pitched 46 innings, only gave up one home run. But you have to think he has a nice future down the road in the Ranger bullpen. He pitched last year at uh, Clearwater in the uh, Florida State League and then Reading. And uh, yeah, put together a great year in the uh, Phillies lower minor leagues. So here we go to the ninth inning. Rangers leading eight to nothing. And Bonilla trying to close things out. First pitch to Willie Tavares. Looking back, ground ball up the middle, but Baker handles that one. And one pitch, one away. Ranger relievers have now retired 12 straight batters. Robertson had six in a row. Bowen had three in a row. And you go back to Joe Ortiz, retired the last two batters he faced. And now the first one here for Bonilla. Ranger bullpen coming in and throwing up zeros and doing it in one, two, three order. Anthony Saratelli will be the hitter as Bonilla misses just off the plate. Saratelli, not a lot of uh, opportunities this spring for the Royals. The big league camp, anyway. 217 the average. It's way inside. Two balls and no strikes. Bonilla has the sign he wants the 2-0 pitch. And that's a belt high. 
called strike. It's two and one. And the last Royals hit came back in the uh, fifth inning. And Lorenzo Kane swinging strike. Two and two now as Bonilla comes back to even the count. Pretty good changeup. The 2 2. In the outside corner missed. And the count is full to Saratelli. Finally gets the sign that he wants, payoff pitch. Jack Swing, he went around. Boy, he just tied Saratelli up like a hostage. <laughs> that is out number two. They ran that fastball in and he definitely, definitely tied him up. The ball wasn't a strike. Tried to check his swing and couldn't do it. So two gone. Max Ramirez now, the former Ranger. Last hope for the Kansas City ball club takes inside for ball one. A one old pitch. That's a good off speed delivery. And the count is even. You see why Bonilla, it's the first opportunity we've had to see much. But a nice assortment of pitches. Wow. Boy. A lot of movement on his low 90s yeah. fastball. Change up or a split or something that goes down and away. Stuff Jump all over the place. Yeah. Looked like a comfortable at bat at all. Jose Felix, the catcher, probably has the least comfortable position of anybody trying to catch that stuff. Two and one. Miss. There's a thing at the bottom falling yeah, out. I'm not sure whether it's a splitter or just a just a change up, but whatever it is, it's got a good good amount of movement on it. I think it might just be a circle change. Well, Max Ramirez has about the same opinion of it that we do. He didn't know. The 2-2. Two -two. Well, that's just a little bit low. Well, the second straight hitter now, but he has gone to a full count. He was trying to get a board to. Prolong this ninth inning and prolong the ball game. Rangers leading eight nothing. Bonilla trying to close the door in one two three fashion. Royals have not had a base runner since a leadoff single in the fifth inning. If you had to pick a pitcher that Bonilla looks a little bit like, you might you might go with Pedro Strope. Mm -hmm. Strope has the same kind of stuff. Mid nineties fastball with movement. Off speed pitch that drops and a slider. Outside and high, ball four. And Ramirez works a two out walk. So the ball game continues, and Chris Getz is going to come up and uh, pinch hit in Billy Butler's spot. Well, the first base runner in the last four innings for the Royals. One on, two outs. Bonilla now trying to go after the Second base candidate for the Kansas City Royals, Chris Getz. And fires a strike in there, Bell High. Gets this spring, like the rest of his uh, Royal teammates, having a, a lot of fun at 314, a home run, and five driven in. Leave and a miss. 0 and 2. That is some nasty stuff that that young man is featuring. That's, that's a good changeup, boy. And the 0-2. He's not afraid to throw it, and that's, no, he likes to throw. Yeah, it. I think that's a strikeout pitch. And that looks like one of those ones that when you only see him one time in a ball game. You probably throw it every pitch, and guys would have a hard time adjusting yeah, to it. I agree. Line down the left field line. That's in for a base hit. 
Stopping at second is Ramirez. Down eight nothing. You're not going to take any chances. And gets with an opposite field slap single is aboard. Two on, two outs. And Brandon Wood now will come up for his first at bat of the evening. Bonilla had a ground out and a strikeout to start the inning and issued a two out walk, which is the one you'll look back on and say, ah, that was a bad walk for me. And a little slap single by Chris Getz. Now he's got runners at first and second, fires a strike to Brandon Wood. Oh, one pitch. A ball and a strike. Wood also having a very good spring. Two home runs, seven driven in. Bidding in an even 300 for the Royals. Two and one. Okay, is the sign. Wave and a miss. We got change up again. Two balls, two strikes. When he hit six feet tall, 175 pounds. Originally signed by the Phillies in 2009. Broke into professional baseball. To close the door here tonight, the 2 2 pitch. And the left field line that is going to hook foul and drop untouched. We'll come back and try it again. Well, you can tell watch, watching him pitch, he, he's trying to impress the big league coaches, the big league manager, and who wouldn't? And the only pitch they've really put in play has been his fastball. So instead of giving him a chance to hit that fastball, he's going with a slider and his changeup one right after the other. Again, the 2 2. Line drive, fair ball down the left field line. Around third, coming in is Ramirez. Getch being waved around third. And there will be no throw. Getch slides in with the second run of the inning. And Brandon Wood gets a two run double with two outs. It's now an 8 to 2 Ranger League. Slider that hung up a little bit, stayed up in the strike zone. Wood was out in front of it, but still was able to keep it fair right down the line. Try to get that one down. He wanted it. Well, the Royals not going quietly here in the ninth inning. They put a couple across, and Wood at second base. Adam Moore is the hitter. He takes a bad high strike. A couple of home runs this spring for the Royals. One ball, one strike. The Rangers eight runs on 17 hits. The Royals two runs on seven hits. Luis Alberto Bonilla trying to close it out. And he is again one strike away from doing so. This is the fourth straight hitter now. He's gotten to two strikes. He hasn't been able to close the door. I think he needs to take another hostage myself. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't swing it. Well, he didn't tie him up, but he <laughs> made him flail around there. Well, that'll do it. He finally gets to the last out. The Royals in the ninth, though, come up with a couple of runs on two hits and a walk. And they strand one runner. Well, the final tonight, the Rangers win it eight to two, and we'll be back with more from Surprise Stadium right after this on TXA 21. <laughs>